Hi, I'm Dario Cortez. Berkeley College believes that all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect our daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and the partners in public television. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, TD Bank, Berkeley College, New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on Earth. MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. And by Activists, in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Welcome to Caucus New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, women often put the health care needs of their family before their own. So what are the consequences of all this? Here in the studio to discuss the steps that women can take to lead a healthier life, we have Joy Cohn, who is a patient at the Women's Primary Care and Wellness Center. Dr. Nermeen Lazarus, who is the lead physician at Virtua's Women's Primary Care and Wellness Center. Dr. Glenn Jarrow, who's been with us before, is a naturopathic doctor. Marjorie Nolan Cohn is a registered dietitian with us before as well. Thank you all for joining us and talking about women's health. Is it true that women often put their health care needs um, way in the back beyond everyone else's? It's very true, and that's why we came up with our practice. Uh, women take care of their children, their husbands, their, how, their homes, their aging parents, and they always put themselves at last. Because? Because they're, we're nurturing by, by nature. Uh, we take care of others, and we don't think about our own issues, and we try to take care of everybody else so that they succeed in life, and we forget about our own needs. But when that happens, bad things happen for women, right? Absolutely. I call it women's syndrome. Women's syndrome? I call it women's syndrome. And 70% of my practice are women. And women are always putting themselves last. They're taking care of everybody. And they really have to carve out some space of their own. So it's really important that they take care of themselves first because the most selfless thing that they can do mm. is to take care of themselves because they can't take, take care of anybody else unless they're well. You know. I introduced you as a uh, naturopathic doctor, actually at the Holistic Naturopathic Center. Describe for folks, Clint, what a naturopathic doctor is, because I am not convinced most people actually know that. Well, you're probably right. A uh, naturopathic doctor does virtually everything that a family doctor would do, a medical doctor, but instead of employing pharmaceutical drugs and recommending surgery, will try to employ natural therapies lifestyle measures that are going to get people well. Give us a for instance. Um, I'll give you an example. Today I had a, uh, a woman that had severe rheumatoid arthritis, a woman that was 30 years old, in severe pain. She came to see me originally three weeks ago. She was on multiple medications, was not getting well. She wanted to die. At 30 years of age? At 30 years of age, she had nothing to live for. Within three weeks, she came for the first time in years with a sense of hope because we were able to relieve uh, quite a bit of her pain and get her to be more functional than she's been probably in five or six years. Through? Through natural therapies, fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, natural anti-inflammatories, uh, and a number of lifestyle measures, including moderate exercise, that are going to get her more functional than she would have been if she was on the drugs alone. And by using the therapies that I had recommended, she was able to titrate off or reduce the number of medications that she had been on. But you know what's interesting, and we'll talk about the diet piece as well in just a second. But Joy, what's interesting is as, as a producer has put the material together about all of you, one of the things I heard is that you told our producers you were very, quote, doctor phobic. It's true. What did that mean? And then you said when you met Dr. Lazarus, things changed. What, what do you mean you're doctor phobic? 
Well, I think that you're nervous about what you're going to hear, and you need somebody to comfort you as well as bring you through some embarrassing moments. And having somebody that you can identify with and talk with and feel comfortable as a woman, particularly when you get past a certain age, it's very comforting. It's, it's helpful. What were you afraid of? Uh, bad news. <laughs> uh, so what would you do? Just I heard that you said, all right, when I had a headache, you have kids, right? I do, grown kids. Okay, so you, you had a headache and you said, well, if I'm wrong, push back, because uh, I heard you can push back too. So uh, <laughs> if, if I, you had a headache, you said, if I have the headache next week, Maybe I'll do something maybe about I'll it. I'll go. Maybe I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'll go see somebody. Maybe maybe I won't. Like, it's just, we, as women, we, you know, when I get everything else done, I'll make that call. So you need a doctor or a facility that, like, reminds you, know, you are due for something. And it's much harder to put it off. What happened when you met? Um... There was a, a chemistry, and I with could Dr. be Lazarus. with Dr. Lazarus, and I could kind of be myself and show that I was terrified of being there. And she was going to uh, bring me down a notch and make fun of me in a very nice <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, is that what you got? <laughs> what, what, that what? Maybe she's. How much of it is a, is, a, is a human connection? I think it's a, a great part of it. I think that any woman would agree. That is that right? Absolutely. What Absolutely. did that do for you? Uh, it calmed my nerves. It made me ask questions that I might never have asked before. It made me seek some help, especially, you know, uh, things that you might find embarrassing. Like, I suffer from some depression, and you hate to admit that because it's like a sense of failure. Uh, Which and, it's not. Well, it, I have grown enough through Dr. Lazarus' tutelage to find that it's not. But at the time, you're thinking... I think I am, you know, this is the way everybody feels, and... Uh, there, but there's things you can do about it, and she helped me a lot with that. And the, and the practice in general was... Uh, and you're healthier now. I am. That's and happier. So interesting. And happier. What did you do for her? One of the things I try to do with my, all my patients is identify with them. So if I know that they're very upset or very nervous about being there, I put them at ease. We joke a little bit. Um, identify certain things and, and basically help them reach whatever goals that they need or whatever help that they need to get in a more personal way. At first, I meet with my patients in my office to get to know who they are, not just Time medically. Out. I heard you meet for almost an hour, if not we more. Do. We do. How, we how, meet. What's that about? Well, just like Joyce said, when you get to know the, the person, that they ask questions that they're more likely not to ask anybody else when they don't feel rushed, when they feel that they're being heard, um, when they're in an environment where it's accepting and they feel that they can be validated and not just, oh, you're a crazy woman and it's just menopause and things like that. So when they're in that environment, the questions that are asked are never, have never been asked before in other types of doctor's offices, traditional do, doctor's you, offices. Do you know you need to make that human connection before you offer clinical advice? It's the most important part of the doctor-patient relationship. The most? The most. Let's talk nutrition. Well, the, the biggest obstacle I find as a registered dietitian working with women is that the, the conversation and the consultation is not about the woman, it's about her family, inevitably. She comes in needing to lose weight, reduce cholesterol, maybe um, prevent diabetes, and what we wind up talking about are her kids the husband, the parents that she's taking care of, and how do you fit in the recommendations? This is my, um, my challenge. How do I help this woman become healthier through all these things that she needs to do with and for her family? And so um, the nutrition education and the recommendations are really being filtered through that work that the mom, an adult woman who's taking care of everyone else needs to do for everyone else in her life first. Uh, how do you get your healthy meals ready for your kids, but you actually sit down and eat with them at the same time? And so um, really, it, it, I'm always looking at the family dynamic as a whole, even though this one person is in my office. Marjorie, I'm going to put you on the spot, because uh, uh, my wife, Jennifer, we have three young, younger children, and I see her struggle with this, and she, she tries to do the right thing and eat right and exercise on a regular basis, but I also <laughs> watch when she's cooking for them. She's trying to um, cook a different meal for herself, mm -hmm. which is really challenging. Is that the norm? Quite often, and actually, uh, that's a great point you bring up because I talk to a lot of my moms uh, about just that. 
what are healthy, easy recipes for the whole family, and how may you need to tweak your own to accommodate your health needs and also your children's to accommodate their tastes is and there, preferences. Is this doable? It's absolutely you, doable. You, you believe it's really doable? Oh, I believe it's doable because I do it every day for myself and my husband who has a digestive condition and we, we truly need different meals. Um, and we need different seasonings and ways of prep preparing those meals. And it's the same base ingredients, chicken, rice, potato, um, be it quinoa or something like that, but I may, I may have to cook in two separate pans on the stovetop. And it really is literally that, that major and minor of a difference I'm, co I'm having to clean one extra pan because I have two different skillets going. You told our producers those small differences, the small changes can make a big difference. Huge difference. It's a huge difference because then um, over time it adds up. It's like anything else. And one of the, the flaws that we have is trying to do too much at one time. And, and nutrition is very complicated and there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation out there. And as women and perfectionists and those of us taking care of everyone else, we feel like we need to do it all and we need to do it all right, right away. And that's really impossible for everyone. So it's these little changes that you can institute that make a big difference. How much of this is truly different? Treating a woman versus a guy, same age, same job, same, I mean professional, job. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have different responsibilities in the home, okay? Um, they usually do, but just they may or may not. But how much is it really different from your practice treating a woman and a man, comparable income, comparable professional situation, comparable age, truly different? Well, it is different. Um, when, I'm, when I'm treating women, first of all, women are more attuned to the way they feel. They're... Um, they will respond, I, I think women will respond in ways that men don't even realize. Uh, a For man instance. will, well, um, women are much more in tune with their bodies. And I really believe that. Um, women internalize a lot of things where men will, they'll slough things off more, more readily. Um, men will not seek out my, my counsel as readily as a woman would. Um, women are just more uh, sensitive to specific needs, but they're also um, in, in a way very uh, selfless where they're not, uh, they're not putting themselves first. Hold on, wait a minute. There's an inherent contradiction here. A woman from your perspective, may be more insightful, may be more aware, may sense there's something that she needs to check out, but less likely to get it checked out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that makes no sense, or it does make mm -hmm. sense because of the nature of women. It makes perfect it makes sense. Perfect it makes sense. perfect sense makes to perfect you? Sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we're great multitaskers and putter-offers and uh, trying to maneuver everybody else's lives as, oh, it makes perfect sense. But, but, but did you, sorry for interrupting, did, if say you had really had a sense that there might be something going on, did you really say, I don't want to know? Yep. <laughs> I've, I've heard it. Yes. I've you heard, heard it. You heard it. Don't tell yes. me I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Did she actually say, don't tell me I don't want to know? Verbatim. And you said to her, You're going to find out. You're going to find out. And we're going to take care of it and it'll be okay. I heard her voice on the phone. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did, but, you, did yeah. you hold her hand? You couldn't do that on the phone, but. But pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. Absolutely. Pretty much. You need I, your I hand so, out. Even as much as going ahead and making the appointment. Whoa, for whoa, me. whoa, whoa, Tom, time out. <laughs> what do you, you? 11? <laughs> <laughs> so you needed your hand held and the appointment made? Yes. I had a, uh, a cancer scare and uh, was sort of paralyzed, and uh, the doctor do picked up the phone and called and made the appointment for me. That's Necessary? In many cases, in many cases, and n not necessarily not for the for the fear, but for busy women, women who are working without time, and women are more likely to follow through, whether there's a scare or not, if the appointment's made for them, if they know that we're on the other side there for them whenever they need. So therefore, I'm, what I'm hearing is that the entire healthcare model seems to, you know, it has to change. It's not working. It's, it's not it's, working. It's not working. Correct. 
it's not working because a patient's given a phone number, a five minute visit with the doctor and out the door and things don't get done, they're confused, they're scared and that the things just you know spiral downhill and now what we're trying to do is slow that down take the time to listen to take care to coordinate to follow through and follow up afterwards it's a do women's concierge service pretty much well women much. women need more time women need more time with their practitioner mm -hmm. a man a, a man that comes to see me wants a quick fix and he wants to be out of just my office me, in 15 20 minutes just tell me doc I, tell me what i have to do when that's exactly it. But a woman, I really have to nurture, I have to spend the time, I will spend an hour, hour and a half with a, with a, a female patient the first time I'm with her and I have to give her assurance that whatever I'm implementing is going to work. I've got to give her a sense of hope. There's a sensitivity there that really needs to be nurtured. And that's basically what naturopathic medicine is all about. And I applaud you, Dr. Lazarus, for taking the time because the medical model today is really broken mm -hmm. and uh, medical doctors are, are beset by the fact that they're getting fewer reimbursements, they've got to see more patients mm -hmm. and there's, we're all, we, we all are limited by the 24 hour day. Mm -hmm. So uh, th most doctors are trying to get rid of their patients within 10 minutes. So, all so time to, out. To, to stay on that. So is this the exception? This is truly the exception and it's remarkable with what you're doing to spend that much time with a patient, this is what patients need. This is what patients really crave, especially your female patients, right. and you should be applauded for doing that. Are you getting pushback from some of your colleagues saying, come on, what are you doing? More jealousy. Are you serious? <laughs> because they, they, everybody would like to spend the time that they, that well, they how can. Are you, hold on then. Mm -hmm. How are you able to do that, given the healthcare model that your colleague just described, mm -hmm. reimbursements not being what you want right. them to be, and everyone right. knows what they are, right? right? They're not changing anytime soon. It's going to get more challenging. Right. How are you able to do that? Well, let me tell you, with the help of Virtua and the system that we've created with our specialists, with our nutritionists, with our fitness center, we're finding outcomes make way better of a Talk difference. Talk about the outcome issue and how that's connected to federal right. government's reimbursement regarding outcomes. It, is this the accountable care cor model? Correct, correct. Explain and it to folks. What, what happens is when, when patients um, take care of themselves, when they have a physician that helps them, when their health improves over the long term, we're finding out that they cost less in the long run. The government's a little slow to find that out, but they're starting to help with the account accountable care and patient-centered medical home to be able to reach out to patients to avoid hospitalizations, re Missions, um, frequent doctor visits, and to take care of more of uh, preventatively. So it's interesting. The federal government is now saying, if the outcomes are better, if you don't go back to the hospital to be readmitted, we will reimburse you. You'll, you'll reap some of those benefits, right. but it's a long-term commitment. Correct. Um, could you give some quick tips to some women and others, particularly women watching right now? Say, hey, I'd like some breakfast tips, dinner tips, whatever, right now that could be really helpful to me and my family. Really use, um, utilize convenience foods. Single serve portions, things that you can eat on the go, cheese sticks, um, whole wheat crackers, cereal and yogurt. We even have a, a lot of companies now have these little yogurt containers that you can drink from if you're driving to work versus <laughs> eating with a spoon. These are products that, while they're convenience foods, they can also be very nutritious foods. Not all fast food is bad food. And so um, invest in them. They may cost a little more, but in the long run, it really may be worth your, your time and uh, the effort that you put out monetarily to um, have easy, quick foods at your fingertips for both yourself as well as your family. Are you against bars? No, Protein not bars. at all. I, I think you need to pick and choose be, and look at the ingredients and be um, conscientious and aware of what you're eating. But there's a lot of really great bars out there that are good products that I eat myself Can on I a regular basis. Can I show you the bars on the way out of here? Absolutely. You tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I just, and also how many in a day. Um, let's do this in the time we have. So many women watching right now and so many women who struggle with these issues who are very concerned about the health, again, uh, of those in their family, will often say, I will, we will, I will worry about myself later on. But when you do that for too long, and you do that too often, there are clearly medical conditions that creep up on you. And if you don't take care of 
them, they get worse, correct? Correct. Such and as? Such as uh, high blood pressure, such as the depression, such as diabetes. Um, and when you don't take care of the, the very early symptoms or the very early problems, or the, when it's very easily treatable, heart attacks, uh, strokes, uh, sudden cardiac death, those kind of things that women would never even think to, to watch out for early on. Uh, and they won't be there for their kids or their parents or their husbands to take care of when they're not well themselves. That's the irony. Mm -hmm. just, just in terms of just exercise, exercise and nutrition, mm -hmm. right? Someone might say, well, that's not a medical issue. But it is, isn't it? I believe it is. Talk about it. Uh, I think you need to make time for yourself. I think that the small investment in time for exercise and mm -hmm. nutrition is probably one of the greatest paths to good health. What have you done? What have I done? Well, funny you should ask. I just cut, as per my doctor, I'm trying to cut sugar out of my diet. You are trying to I cut am. sugar? For how, how long has this been going on? Four days. Four days? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, come on. Truth. It's the truth. I am. It's just How, I like, what precipitated this? Uh, elevated blood sugar and you know other things, but uh, it was time to take a stand. The doctor said, "Better now than later," and uh, I've given myself a challenge. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to talk to you later uh, to see if I can really make a change. I'm going to be 60, and I want to live a longer, healthier life. So, wow. Yeah. Anything else you're giving up? No, that's okay. That's just no. there. <laughs> Plenty. But you're exercising as well. I, I am. I'm, I'm relatively good at that. I like to walk and ride my bike and hike, and that's not my problem. My problem is a sweet tooth. Oh, you do have the sweet I tooth? I do. Well, hold on. If you're giving up sugar, I just want to clarify what that means. I'm, where is where's the sugar found for you? Well, it's found probably, she would be the expert, not me. I am making a conscious effort to give up the obvious sugar places, you know, like sugar-loaded things, you know, candy or chocolate and chocolate. You're giving up chocolate. Oh, see, if you said sugar, that's one thing. You're giving up chocolate. I'm going to try. Okay. She's doing great. I'm doing right. four days. Jump back in and then jump, jump back in. The other I need thing your I just <laughs> really wanted to point out, um, I'm also a, a dietitian and a personal trainer, so I do both, the nutrition and the exercise. And what people don't really realize um, in the vein of what you were saying, doctor, is that nutrition is the number one determiner of health in, it, it, above all. Well, not, not, hold on, wait a minute. Yeah. It's more important than exercise? Exercise is number two. Nutrition is more? Yeah, absolutely. What you put into your body is, is going to directly um, change the outcomes of how your body functions. And certainly exercise is right up there, but nutrition is number, number one. Number one. You believe that? But both are important. I had a patient that came to see me February 28th, A1C of 12.8. Now, at 6.5. don't know what that means. Now, an A1C at 6.5, you're official, you officially have diabetes, right? Okay. His A1C was 12.8. His fasting glucose was 338. Wow. I just got his... That means nothing good, I imagine. It's nothing good. He had severe diabetes. He had a blood pressure of 185 over 115. Well, I do know I that's just got not his, good. I just got his numbers October 15th. His A1C is now 5.9. Translate he that. Is well, at 6.5, you're diabetic. So the ideal diabetic. number of the A1C should be somewhere below 5.7. 5. 7. Right. So he's at 5.8. He came down from 12.8 wow. to 5.9 in seven months, watching his diet, diet <laughs> modification, mm -hmm. exercise and too? exercise. Did you put him on the exercise plan? I put him on the exercise program. Do you I, monitor it? I do. I do. So you're on t it's not just, hey, get out there and go take a walk. You monitor what well, this Well, I'm a medical exercise specialist as well. So I put him on a program. His brother-in-law is a personal trainer. So I said, have your brother-in-law contact me. I will set up the exercise prescription. And between your diet, supplementation, and your exercise program, we're going to reverse your diabetes. Now, I can't tell people that I'm going to cure them of diabetes, but this is an individual that was cured of diabetes. And you were confident that whatever m prescription drug that there may or may not have been available to help this person, you were convinced that these other methods would be extremely helpful? Well, he never went on a medication. He had, he had not seen, before he came to see me, he had not seen a medical doctor in 20 years. 
So to cover myself, I sent him to a medical doctor okay. just to monitor him. He wagered with his medical doctor, please let me go on Dr. Gerald's program. Don't let me go on a medication for 60 days. Give me a 60-day trial. But you're not, listen, it's, it's not either or. You, but you yeah, do have no to check your, with your physician, no right? Way. Always check with your physician, especially when it's severe. Absolutely. But especially with diabetes and high blood pressure, if you develop a medical, homeopathic, naturopathic, and fitness and nutrition program, you can have outcomes without medication. Doctor, before I let you uh, and everyone out of here, and by the way, you've been incredibly helpful, all of you, 30 mm -hmm. seconds left. Someone says, oh, come on, it's too late for me. Woman says, too late, you say. It's never too late. Never too late. No matter how old you are, you can always get healthier than where you are at this point. Always, you can extend your life, quality of life, not just quantity, and take care of people. You really believe life. that? Absolutely, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Listen, all of you have done a tremendous public service in being here, and you... We better not find out that you've been eating chocolate. We are, we are, listen, I believe in you. We all believe. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, TD Bank, Berkeley College, New Jersey Natural Gas, United Water, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, and by activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. This healthcare message is brought to you by MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. Choosing a new family doctor can be confusing. Check with your health insurer to see which physicians near you participate with your plan. Find out which hospitals the doctor uses and who covers when the doctor is away. And remember to schedule an appointment with your new doctor in advance to fill out any paperwork without the added stress of being sick.